Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this brand new CPU heatsink fan from Enermax. This is the ETS T40. So maybe you're looking at these three boxes and saying, Paul, that looks like one CPU cooler. And well, the difference here is in these little stickers. So you'll notice this is the ETS T40 VD. This is the ETS T40 TA. And then uh, over on the right is the ETS T40 TB. So this is kind of the base model here, uh, which has a black uh, fan attached. And then these two on the left come with specialty fans, which I'm going to show you guys towards the end. But uh, for our purposes, Effectively, all the heat sinks themselves are the same, so I'm going to start with this one right here. You will note that they've put it as they've put it. I just said put it. They put it a sticker here that says LGA 2011, and uh, that means that it's compatible with the newest socket from Intel. Uh, that said, let's look at some of the specs over here on the side. Here's our socket compatibility list. Uh, Intel, you have LGA 775, 1155, 1156, 1366, and of course 2011 listed on the front. Also for AMD, you have AM2, AM2+, AM3, AM3+, and FM1. Uh, here's the overall dimensions, and you'll notice they've also put some specs over here on the right side. So 160 millimeters total heights, uh, 50 millimeters is the width of the base plate, 139 millimeters is the total width. So make sure that you have enough room in your computer case if you're going to be installing this aftermarket heatsink fan. Weight is 610 grams. You get four six millimeter heat pipes. They are copper heat pipes with aluminum fins on the radiator. And then you have a thermal resistance of 0 0.09 degrees Celsius per watt. The thermal grease included is Dow Corning TC5121. And then here on the bottom, you notice all the different specs. Well, I shouldn't say different. These are the specs for the three models that I showed you the boxes for. You'll notice that they're all exactly the same except for the, fan, the LED listing on the fan. Uh, this one I have here has no LED, and the other two have some LEDs that I'm going to show you when I take them out of the box. Here's some more information on the other side of the box, which uh, repeats some of the specs I just listed off on the side. But there you have it if you want to take a look. Let's go on with an unboxing. So here's a look at the contents of the retail box, and uh, first off, well, you have the heatsink fan itself, which we're going to come back to in a moment. I'm going to go over the accessories as well as the sort of a brief overview of the installation. Here's the user's manual that they've included. It is in multiple languages, and uh, it has some nice pictures to guide you through the installation process. There's a look at the front and back, and speaking of the installation process, I'll just keep this handy so I can make sure I'm not telling you guys anything wrong. Uh, we start off with the universal back plate. You're going to use this for any socket except for Intel LGA 2011, which has a universal mounting plate. Uh, if you're using an Intel socket, you'll take these pads and put them against the back of your motherboard. If you use an AMD, you'll use this side and put that against the back of your motherboard. In either case, you will put that behind your motherboard first. You use these washers on top of your mother motherboard to provide some spacing. You then take these little uh, standoffs here and post them through there, and that will uh, hold the bracket in place and also provide some standoffs to mount these brackets over here on the right side. Uh, these two here, the straight ones, are for Intel sockets, and these two here are for AMD sockets. Those get mounted. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I'm doing Intel, so I should use the Intel ones. Uh, those get mounted on top of those spacers right there, and they provide two posts, uh, which then you will mount this little holder too, and uh, that actually feeds through the bottom of the heat sink. It's got a couple uh, posts that will hold it in place once it's lined up like that. And then that gets mounted uh, on top of your CPU and the CPU sockets. Uh, this little guy here goes through these posts like so. Again, this is a high level demonstration I'm doing here. Uh, and then finally you have these guys here, uh, which you will bolt onto the side, and that will actually secure the CPU and uh, the heat sink, I'm sorry, secure the heatsink fan and everything down to the CPU and the bracket that you have installed. That said, you have a little wrench right here that they've given you to tighten down those bolts. Uh, they've also provided you with a couple extra um, metal brackets here, or metal um, retention clips, I should say. Uh, in case you do want to add a second 120 millimeter fan to this setup, it does come with one, but it is uh, able to provide or to handle a second if you want to do push pull configuration. You also get some uh, rubber pads here, and that is again if you add a second fan, you put those between the fan 
and the uh, cooling fins to provide some dampening for the fan's vibration. Here's the aforementioned thermal paste that they've included, so you get a little tube of that for a few different applications. That should last for. And I think that covers everything out here, except you do also have these uh, LGA 2011 uh, standoffs. And again, uh, if, you're running, if you're lucky enough to be running an L Intel LGA 2011 system uh, that has a universal backplate, you just mount these to it and then proceed with the uh, rest of the mounting hardware that I already showed you. And here is a look at the ETS T40 heatsink fan itself. As you can see, it is a high-rise style cooler. Uh, so from the base plate here, you have copper heat pipes that project up through this stack of aluminum cooling fins. And then you have a fan, uh, right now a fan, single fan mounted to one side is going to be pushing air across those fins to dissipate the heat. And generally speaking, the back of your case will be somewhere in this area over here and eject it out the back of your case. Uh, as you can see, here is a look from the top. That's the termination point of the four uh, copper heat pipes. They sort of make a U-shape uh, down across the uh, base plate and up into the fins. Um, here on this side, you can see the pre-installed 120, 120 millimeter fan that's attached with these metal clips. If you pull on the clip, you can pop it off on either side and actually remove the fan, so not too difficult to pop off or pop back on. Oopsie. Uh, and then here is the fan itself. It is uh, sort of a unique fan. I, this is my first experience with one of these. You'll notice it's actually got a metal bracket ring that uh, runs around the interior, sort of uh, just outside the fan edges. It's got Enermax logo punched out of that metal retaining bracket on all four sides. Uh, there's a look at the fins themselves. Again, 120 millimeter fan. It has a braided cable, and it is PWM, so that's a four pin fan connector, and generally speaking, you'll be connecting that to your CPU fan header on your motherboard. Uh, now, this fan is uh, just a simple black fan. Uh, it is uh, intended to be a silent fan, uh, but doesn't have any lights or anything like that. The other two options for this cooler include light-up fans, so um, I will pop those out in just a second and, and actually plug them in to demo them. But one uh, last thing is they have put those uh, rubber pads on the back of this. Again, that goes up against the uh, cooling fins themselves, and that just provides a little bit of extra noise dampening as the fan itself is spinning. Here's another look at the radiator without the fan installed. Here's a little 360 of it. Uh, again, you have the option to do push-pull by installing a fan on either side. And the fin configuration, the shape of them, actually sort of uh, wraps around either edge of the fan so that sort of keeps it centered on the heat sink or the stack of uh, aluminum fins. Finally, down here at the bottom, you'll notice there is some protective plastic pre-installed. You want to peel that off before you apply your thermal paste. And uh, you will also note that the uh, copper heat pipes here have direct contact. Heat pipes themselves make direct contact with the CPU once it's installed, and that provides uh, well, generally speaking, the co direct contact copper pipe uh, heat sinks that I have encountered provide much better cooling than the alternative to uh, copper pipes going with a copper base plate. Here is all three heat sinks uh, with the fans attached side by side. So uh, here on the left side is the standard version that I already showed you guys. You get the TB Vegas fan here, and uh, if you guys can see all along the outside of there, lots and lots of LEDs, and I'll show you what those do in just a moment. Finally, here on the right side, we have the TB Apolish. I don't know how that's pronounced, but that's as close as I'll get. Uh, and that is a blue LED, so let's turn these on. All right, guys, so I don't know how much of you can see right now, but you can at least hear me. Um, I'm going to quickly do a fan speed test for this Enermax fan, the, the base model that we have. My mic is very close to it, so I don't know how well you can hear. But right now, it's at its lowest RPMs, which is pretty much inaudible. Now I'm going to crank it up to max RPMs, which gives a bit of a whoosh, but still not too bad. And again, that's all the way max, so even at about, that's probably about 50% there, and again, drops down to practically inaudible, so very quiet fans here. Next up, we do have three of these. You can probably see the blue LED fan on the right, but uh, I'm going to turn up the Vegas fan, which has a bunch of different modes that we can do, and actually a button on it here at the back, which I'm going to push, and now it's lit up. So there in the middle is our Vegas fan. It's on the left side of the screen right now, and this is just 
all blue. It has blue and red LEDs, and then it's got a bunch of different options to switch to between those. So uh, that was blue, here's red, there's blue and red together. Uh, again, this is the Vegas fan. Pushing the button again, we, wait, did it take, there we go. So now we can get sort of a rotational fan spin uh, demonstration here with blue. Can push it again and switch this to red. There's red. Push it again, and there's, there's just a bunch of different modes this fan can do. There's blue and red together with the rotational effect. There's flashing, if you like the flashing. Flashing red. Uh, flashing red and blue. So as you can see, all these different modes, and you can do them with blue by itself or with blue and red. So there's uh, sort of another spinny mode with blue and red. And this, one's, this one actually kind of rotates between the three versions. And then finally off. So you can turn them off if you do uh, so prefer. And I'm going to leave that one off so we can move over to the third fan. Let me just turn it up a little bit here. So this uh, is the blue version here. And this one's pretty simple. It's just blue. You'll notice that if you do uh, move the fan's rotational speed down or up, that it will dim or get brighter. There it is at its brightest mode. And there's no button on this one because this is just sort of an always on version. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the new collection of Enermax CPU heatsink fans, the ETS T40 series. Uh, again, the VD is the Vegas version. The TA is the blue LED version. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.